Hey there everyone, today I'm going to build a basic multifamily real estate model. I'll share the finished model on my blog, but the, the idea around this video is to hopefully give you a, a, a peek into how I think about real estate modeling. Maybe there's a tip or two that you'll learn. I found in my career that when I just sit behind someone and watch them model that I learn things. Uh, or when I pull open other people's models and I, I dig into them, I learn things. And hopefully this video will do that for you. It's very uh, basic. Um, likely, if, if you're an experienced real estate financial uh, modeling professional, you won't learn a lot. But if you're newer to uh, real estate, this is going to be, I, I think, a very helpful video. So this is the model I'm going to recreate. Uh, so let's get started. What I typically do, I start uh, by just dropping information onto a tab. It's very much a, a, a brain dump, right? So I have I have this information. I at least I just want to get get on paper, uh, and so I just start. And, and later, as I'm going through, I might reorganize this um, in a way that maybe makes more sense. But for now. Just going to drop in. So I have some basic assumptions: property name, number of units, which that will be linked to my rent roll, a purchase price, uh, so forth. A going in cap rate. Uh, then I have some debt assumptions: loan amount, right, interest rate, uh, amortization, monthly payment. Um, this model is very simple. So no IO. The term matches the whole period. Uh, so th obviously the debt is just very simple. Um, I'm going to have a rent roll. Generally, uh, with a more robust multifamily model, the rent roll will be on a separate tab. I'll be modeling things like renewal rate, releasing costs, uh, downtime between leases, etc. Uh, in this case, because this is more about illustrating the process than anything, I'm just going to have the rent roll right here. It's going to be really simple. We have unit types, number of units for each type, and the monthly rent for that type. And then finally, uh, we're going to have right a residual value, and there's some uh, assumptions that are that go along with that. We'll have a terminal cap rate and some selling costs. That's going to drive our, our residual value. And then I'm just going to bold these top uh, headings, and then let's put the information itself. So I'm going to call this election heights. I'm going to make any of my input cells blue, and I use a control shift. B to do that using the WST macros add-in. It's a free add-in. You can find it on, on my blog. A lot of these uh, keyboard shortcuts that I'm using require you to have that add-in, including that control shift B to turn the font automatically blue. A number of units is going to be based on this rent roll, so let's just build this out. Uh, real simple. Uh, studio is one type. One bed, one bath is another. Two bed, one bath is the, another. These are blue because they're inputs. So I'm just going to have a total here. And then units, these again are blue. And uh, we're going to say there's 20, 15 studios, 25 one beds, and 10 two beds. I hit Alt equals sign, and that sums up automatically those items. And then I'm just going to, I hold Shift, right arrow, that selects these cells, and I'll do a Control U and that underlines. And so there I have my rent roll almost built out. Finally, I'm going to do a monthly rent for each item. I'm first hitting Control Shift B to turn this blue, and then Control Shift dollar sign to turn that into uh, a dollar, um, or to format that as dollars. And then I'm going to do a Control Alt uh, less than sign or or comma to shrink the number of decimals. So let me show that again. Um, so this one is $1,200. This is $1,500. Notice there's two decimals there, and I'll get rid of those in a second. $1,800. So to get rid of these decimals, again, I highlight the cells. I hit Control-Alt, uh, comma, two times, removes the decimals. Okay. If I'm interested to know the, uh, actually, what I'm going to put here is the total monthly rent for this rent roll if the property were 100% lease. I'm going to do a sum product formula for that. And this is when I'm some producting. Okay, and then I'm going to hit Control Shift Dollar Sign, Control Alt, uh, comma, get rid of our decimals. Okay, so I have my rent roll built out. Again, extremely simplistic. But my number of units now over here is going to be linked to the number of units. Okay, purchase price. I am going to make this an input. And so turn that blue, make it a dollar sign, remove the decimals, 
and uh, for now I'm just going to call this 9.25 9 million. But what I could do uh, once I have some cash flow is I can uh, base this purchase price on some going in cap rate. So again, I'm going to make this 5.5. .5. Uh, to turn it into a um, percent, by the way, is Control Shift 5 or Control Shift percent. And then I'm going to use a Control Alt uh, greater than sign or Control Alt period to open up my decimals. So there I have my going in cap rate. And again, I, I will likely make the purchase price defaulted to uh, year one NOI divided by this cap rate. But for now, I'm going to leave that. Then in terms of debt, uh, dollar amount, this is going to be a percentage for just for now, uh, but it's going to be an input. I'm going to make the 75% of my purchase price. Uh, then I'm going to use, I'm going to close my decimals. I'm going to turn this blue. And it's a currency already. And then this is my interest rate. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Shift 5 to turn that into percentage. And then I'm going to make percentage 4. But then I'm going to turn it blue, open up uh, one additional decimal. And then in terms of amortization, I'm going to hit Control 1. And that opens my format cells. I'm going to hit Tab. That gets into my categories. I'm going to down arrow to Custom. And I'm going to make this a custom item. All right. And the, this is months, and I want to tell the user that this is months, and so, but I also don't want any decimals in these months. So I'm going to do a zero space, parenthesis, or uh, quotation marks, months, close quotation. And so when I do 360, now it has months, turn it blue. And then finally, monthly payment. I'm going to use a payment function, PMT. And then I hit tab, and that just automatically opens my parentheses. It asks for a rate. It's this rate, but this is a monthly payment, so I make that rate divided by 12. N per is the number of periods. In this case, it's already in months, so I don't have to do divided by 12. And then the present value is negative loan amount. Negative because uh, there's cash flow going out to get a positive in. Now, I don't like that there's two decimals, so I'm going to close those, and I'm going to turn this. I'm not going to turn this blue because it's not an input. Now, notice this right here is defaulted, but I left it blue with the, the idea that, hey, you, Mr. User, can change that. But I don't want the user to change this monthly payment. Therefore, I make it black. I'm going to underline this with a control, un, oh, control U. And then residual value, uh, this again, these are both percentages. So I'm going to highlight both of those. Control Shift percentage sign, Control Alt uh, greater sign. That's going to open one decimal. And then I'm going to have my going out cap rate be 50 basis points. Actually, I'm going to make it equal to my going in. Uh, I'm going, going to assume that the cap rates will not rise over the term, which is unlikely. But still, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that just for this exercise. And then selling costs, I'm going to put at 1.5%. Again, turning it blue. Now, if I had more time, I would then go and I would name each one of these cells, right? So, for instance, my terminal cap rate, I would probably come up here. I would name this terminal cap rate. But uh, for, in the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and start the model itself. I'm going to go to row nine. Uh, let's start on E, and I'm going to make this year one. I'm going to make this year one. So I'll put a one in here, but I want this to actually say year one. So I, I hit Control One, tab to my categories, scroll down to my custom, tab again, it opens up the type, and this is year and some number, and so now this says year one, right? And then going to copy this over so I keep the same formatting and then I'm just going to equal this plus one and then I'm going to make this 11 years I made it 14 so let me delete some of those okay so I have my 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 period and then this right here is a year zero now I'm not going to call this portion year zero but I'm going to leave this open then I'm going to have actually this is my income and uh, to save time, I'm just going to drop in my categories right now. So let me copy them one sec. So I copy them in. This is what I want, but then I have some formatting. So uh, I select those. I hit uh, Alt H6. That indents. 
dent those. I'm going to want to dent those. And let's see, cap rate or cap X all in dent and debt service all in dent. And then I'm going to bold uh, before tax cash flow, and that's with a control B. I'm going to bold, actually, I want to bold this entire row. So to, to select the entire row, you hit shift space bar, and then I'm going to hit control B. Control B. Uh, let's bold NOI. Let's bold OPEX. Let's bold EGI. Let's bold PGI. Uh, let's keep income. Then what I want is I want an inflation line. All right? So I'm going to be inflating this income by some value. And this is actually going to be an input. Uh, let me. Uh, oops. I'm going to write indent that. Okay. Okay, so then I these are going to be inflation rates. And so I'm going to turn these blue, make them uh, percentages. And that way you're. Open it one. Okay, I'm going to say no inflation in year one, 4% in year two. Okay, four, three, two, and then I'm just going to have the rest of these equal. Okay, so that's what I'm assuming income is going to do. That's the growth, and then I'm going to italicize that, and uh, that way I know that these are inputs here. And then, and then I'm going to have rent, which I'll do in a second. Then I have other income, and I'm actually going to make these inputs as well. So the rent is driven by the rent roll, but the other income and my recoveries are going to be driven by some value. Again, this is simplistic. In a more robust model, I would have a separate income, other income and recoveries calculations, but for here, this is real simple. I'm going to say that I have 26,000 in other income. I've got 3,000 in recoveries. Which uh, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this. Uh, number of units times $60 a unit. So I assume $60 in recoveries. My potential gross income line is a sum of these lines. All right? And then my rent is this value times 12. So uh, I have revenue for, I have rent for the first year, right? It's my monthly, total monthly rent line here multiplied by 12. And then I have my other income and recoveries. Those are inputs. And then I have the sum of all of those. All right, and I hit F2 so I can open up and, and look at what this formula is doing. So what I want is I want to make all of these the same formatting in terms of a currency with no decimals. Okay, I use the mouse. So uh, anytime it opens up like that, uh, there probably is a keyboard shortcut I need to learn. But if I want to, if I want to make this column the automatic uh, width, I just double click right here. Okay, so then I'm going to underline my recovery line and then I will just, actually I don't want to copy over yet because I have some growth. So what I'm going to do now is each year these values are going to grow by this amount. So it's just a simple formula. It's equals the value to the left multiplied by, open parentheses, one plus the inflation rate. Now, I need to set an absolute reference here so that I can copy this both to the right and down and uh, capture the appropriate inflation for each. So uh, in this case, what I want to do is I want to lock in the row, but I want to keep the column relative. To do that, I hit F4 one, two times, and so that the dollar sign is just left of the row value, which in this case is 10. And then I hit enter. So what this is doing, this is inflating uh, this value by 4%. And when I copy this over, it will inflate the value to the left by the inflation rate in that year. Okay. And so I'm just going to copy this formula down. Now I, I want to copy it down, but these are all going to be black. Uh, I want to copy it down, but I want to first set my formatting. I set my formatting. That way when I do a copy, and I'm just going to do a standard copy, control C, copy those both down. Control V to paste, and then I'll underline. I want to keep these black, right, because they're not inputs. And then this I'm just going to copy straight over. Now that these are copied over in the right format with with the, and I can hit F2 so I can just confirm that uh, the copy worked. I'm just going to highlight those. Control C. Uh, 
I go up, I hit control right arrow down, I hit control shift left, hit the right arrow, hit the down arrow, hit control V, and they're pasted. Now, the, the, the problem I have is you get some of these like number signs, that means that the value doesn't fit within the cell. And so just to quickly do this, I hit control space bar, that highlights my rows. And then I'm just going to grab this and just pull a little bit to the right with my mouse until I find, there we go, there. So I have my income built out, great. Now I want to do vacancy. Well, to do vacancy, it's similar to inflation, it's just going to be an input. And real quickly to do this, rather than building this out by itself, I'm going to come up to my inflation, I'm going to hit a control shift right arrow that selects all of that information. I'm going to hit control C and I'm just going to come down, copy it here and I'm going to change this to vacancy, right? And then it's just building this vacancy assumption. Let's see, uh, year one, 8%. And I think this vacancy is going to slowly drop to 6% and then equals 6 to the end. And that's what I think vacancy is going to do, which makes sense, right? So as rent is increasing over the next couple of years, we also have vacancies declining some, and then it hits in year five, what I'm thinking is my long-term growth at 2%, my long-term vacancy of 6%. And then vacancy is a simple formula. It is my potential gross income multiplied by my vacancy rate, and that's vacancy. Now, it automatically defaults to currency with two decimals, I want to remove the decimals with a control alt comma, and then I'm just going to copy this over, and I have my vacancy done. And then effective gross income is potential gross income minus my vacancy. I'm going to underline this, I'm going to copy both of these over again, that way I have the underline, and there I have my effective gross income. Now let's talk expenses. In the same way, as with income, with expenses, there's going to be some inflation of those expenses. But in this case, I'm just going to say it's 2% throughout the term. But I also say 2%, actually, no, let's keep that zero. Okay, 2% throughout. And then all of these expenses are going to be inputs. So I'm going to highlight all, all of these cells, control shift B to turn them blue, control shift dollar sign to turn it into uh, currency, control alt minus two times to remove the decimals and then I'm going to have marketing at 30,000 and these are just hypotheticals, just drop these in. Uh, my management is actually going to be a percentage so I'm just going to say it's 3% of effective gross income so I just go up here times 0.03 that's my management management insurance 15,000 property taxes 115 operating expense I hit uh, equals sum tab up that's my operating I'm going to underline that so I have my operating expenses now and then in the same way as we did here I'm just going to build a formula equals value to the left multiplied by 1 plus my inflation, F4 two times to lock in the row absolute, keeping the column relative. Enter, uh, get my formatting right, copy this down, copy this over, underline this, and then I'm gonna copy this, oops, copy this all the way over, okay? So now I have my expenses done. You see expenses growing at 2%, income growing, uh, at this rate, and then it comes to NOI, right? Net operating income is effective gross revenue minus operating expenses. It gives us our net operating income. I'm just going to copy that value over. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is actually a 10 year hold. I'm modeling year 11 because we are, for our terminal value, our residual value, we'll actually be capping year 11 NOI by our cap rate. And so I'm modeling to this point uh, through to year 11. The rest I'm only going to be modeling through year, year 10, and you'll see that as we, as we proceed. So then I have a cap, CapEx reserve. Um, again, this is just going to be a basic input. I'm going to borrow, uh, yeah, I'm going to borrow that formula up here. 
because it already includes the formatting uh, that I want, and then I'm just going to make this formula, you know, a, a dollar amount. Let's say, um, uh, let's say the number of units multiplied by two hundred dollars. Okay, uh, it looks a little light. Let's make it two fifty. And then in the same way here, I'm going to inflate this by my expenses. And since this formula right here already locks in this inflation, I can actually copy that, bring this down and paste it. And then I hit F2 to confirm that it's doing what I want, which is taking the, the value immediately to the left and inflating it by that expense inflation rate. And then I'll just copy that formula over. I will build out my cash flow from operations, which is my net operating income less my capital expenditures. I will underline, oops, you know what I need to do? I need to underline, oops, underline that, underline that, copy this one over, and then I'm going to copy both of these over again. And then I have cash flow from operations. What I want to do is I want to delete those. Okay, and I delete those again because I'm only modeling out to year 10, and this reminds me that that's the case. Finally, we have debt service. Well, we already know what debt service is. That's pretty simple. That's our monthly payment. And I'm going to hit I'm going to hit F4 here. That way we lock in that value and we multiply it by, by 12 because these are years. It defaults to a currency with two decimals. I'll use my control alt comma to close those. Drop my debt service in. Makes sense that the payments are going to stay the same each year because there is no interest only. And then my before tax cash flow is my cash flow from operations minus my debt service, 103. Copy those over. And there we have our setup. Okay, this is our real estate setup where we go from PGI all the way to our before tax cash flow. And from here, we can now calculate our risk metrics and our return metrics. So what I first want to do is I want to create a summary of what metrics I'm going to be tracking. So I'm going to just up here, risk, a summary of risk and returns. And I'll be looking at, I'm just going to copy these quickly so I don't uh, bore you. Unlevered IRR, unlevered equity multiple, levered IRR, levered equity multiple. And then also on the, let's see, on the return side, I'm going to put, and I'll just uh, copy these again save time, average free and clear, average cash on cash. Free and clear being the cash on cash return before debt service, cash on cash being um, after debt service or on a levered basis. And then I have a minimum debt coverage over the hold, a minimum debt yield over the hold. Again, very simplistic, but uh, I think it serves our purposes for this exercise. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to build my risk line. Okay. Now the difference here is there's going to be a year zero, right? Because there's some cash flow that happened at year zero. Because this is an acquisition, uh, before operations begin, there will be a cash outflow, uh, purchasing the property. And so that's why we have a year zero here. And then just to make this simpler, I'm going to come up, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste, and then I'm going to do an alt H A R and that right indents this. And then in terms of risk, I'm going to, let's see, I, I need to calculate my loan balance. That helps me uh, with my debt yield. And there's a lot of things. We could calculate loan to value throughout the hold. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to, but we could. There's a lot of things that we could do, uh, but it's nice to have the loan balance. So let's calculate the loan balance. So what is, what is the formula for loan balance? Well, I, I recognize that there's a function in Excel to do this, but uh, I prefer to use a present value. And we know that the, the balance today is the present value of all future cash flows. Okay? And so we, the rate is the rate of the loan. That's this. And I'm going to use an F4 to lock that in, but I divided it by 12. My N per is the initial amortization. I'm going to use an F4 to lock that in. Minus how many periods are left. And how, how many periods are left? Well, it's the year one. And now you you realize why I didn't just type in year one and actually made uh, this a value is because now I'm going to multiply year one by 12. And what this does, okay, so those are my end purse. My payments always stay the same. That's just monthly payment, F4. And then I times that by 12 because it's an annual. 
and then I close parentheses. And it got me a huge number. Now what I did wrong is I multiplied the, the monthly payment by 12. I don't want to do that because this is actually, the end per is on a monthly basis, and so I need my payments to be on a monthly payment basis. When I do that, there we go, that's the value I want to see. And so we have loan balance. Now, you know, this is a personal thing. I don't like the red, and so I'm going to change this to black. Uh, again, that was control one. Tab to there, enter. It changes to black, and then I can just copy this formula. I should be able to just copy this formula over. It's going to calculate. Okay, I have my loan balance. I also want to delete this year 11 that I had brought over. So I have my loan balance. Next, I want to calculate my debt coverage. Okay, debt coverage is, and in, in this case, uh, this is an, an NOI debt coverage. It's NOI divided by the debt service. All right, so I just hit equals NOI in that given year divided by the debt service in that given year, and it gives me this number. Now I want to turn this into a certain format, and so I'll hit Control-1, Tab, down to Custom, Tab again up into the type, and I'm going to do 0, 0.00, .00. so I want two decimals, quotation marks, large X, quotation marks, close, and there is that, that. and I'm just going to copy this over, and there I see the debt coverage in each year. And it makes sense as the loan amortizes down, the, there's more coverage in each year. I mean, I'm sorry, as as the NOI grows, there's more coverage in every year. Uh, what, what we'll see uh, benefit from the amortizing down is in our debt yield. So our debt yield, and this is an NOI debt yield, is our NOI divided by the loan balance, and this is at the end of this year. Now, I need to make my loan balance positive, so I make this a negative, this negative value, and that gives me a, a positive, and then I'm going to turn this into a percentage. Open a couple decimals so I can see what this value is, and then I'm going to copy this over, and then again, as this, as the loan amortizes down, the yield on the outstanding balance increases to the lender. Now, debt yield, uh, if you're unfamiliar with, with, the, with the concept, is if the lender were to take back this property, their basis would be the loan balance. And so the NOI over that basis is, would be the yield that the lender would, be, uh, would get off of this property. So those are our risks. Then I'll have returns. Let me get myself some space. I'm going to copy and paste in uh, my categories just to save time. But I, what I have here, and uh, let's see, I need to left indent these. All right, and let's increase the size of this column. That way it looks a little prettier. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to indent this just a tad. Uh, let's see, let's indent. So the, again, our returns, uh, I'm going to copy my years down. So I have a purchase. Now this is first on an unlevered basis. So I'm, I'm going to calculate my returns on an unlevered or without debt basis, and then I'm going to uh, calculate my returns on a levered basis or after uh, or including debt. And so in year zero, there's a purchase. How much is that purchase? Well, it's a negative, so this is a outflow of the purchase price. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna turn this black. Oops, what am I doing? Okay. And then uh, I have a cash flow from operation. So I like to break these out so I can see them. This is the only value that's going to be on this row. Cash flow from operations equals, again, this cash flow from, from operations. Copy that over. I have a sale then, and this sale comes at year 10. And what is the purchase, what, what's the sale amount? Well, it's NOI in year 11, this value, divided by my terminal cap rate, okay? And I can't quite see it, so let's open this column just a touch. All right, so we purchased this at 9.25 million over a 10 year period because of the growth in uh, income, uh, the sale price is 12.344. Again, we did not grow our cap rate. And then we have a we have sales costs, and that is simply the 
uh, terminal value multiplied by our selling cost percentage, close those, and then we have here a, and I'm going to, yeah, okay, I'm going to make this a negative value, so I can just use a sum formula. And then my total unlevered cash flow is a sum of those four items. So year zero is the outflow, year one through 10 are inflows with the exception of the selling cost. This right here again is a sum of all of these and because I made this negative, it uh, subtracts that out. And there is our total unlevered, let me bold it, total unlevered cash flow. And then we wanna know what is our free and clear return on this? Well, our free and clear return is uh, and I'm going to do this on a cash flow from operations basis. Our cash flow from operations divided by however much we spent. And in this case, we spent $9.25 million. And so I divide it by this amount. I'm going to F4 this. Oops, which is, I'm going to lock that into place. Um, but I'm going to make this negative so that we get a positive percentage. All right, so 5.41. Make these bold, copy this over. That's our free and clear. Our average is 6.35, okay? And that will link back up to our uh, summary box up top. Our unlevered IRR is an equal IRR of all the cash flows, or 8.37. Uh, and then our unlevered equity multiple equals a sum if of all of the positive cash flows through the hold. So sum if that range, parentheses, greater than zero, or a quotation marks, I'm sorry, uh, greater than zero, close quotation marks, close parentheses, divided by a negative sum if all negative values, all right? comma, quotation, minus zero, quotation, close. And then I'm going to turn this into a equity multiple. Okay, so on an unlevered basis, these cash flows yield an 8.37% IRR, again, based on a $9.25 million purchase price and a almost two unlevered equity multiple. On a levered basis though, it's going to be better because our interest rate on the loan is lower than our unlevered IRR. And so we calculate this by, so first we have what is the outflow in time zero? Time zero? Well, it is the purchase price here plus any loan amount that came in, which is this amount. So we had an outflow, an equity outflow of 2.3 million because uh, there was 9.25 of total loan comes in for a portion the remainder it, remainder is the equity outflow and but the equity inflow is also less and that is our before tax cash flow right so this is cash flow from operations minus debt so service or before tax cash flow oops I'm putting on this on the wrong row okay loan funding I actually I guess I'd break in the, broken this out so I have a purchase price I have a loan funding and that's a positive value I guess I just do this. Okay, yeah. So loan funding, and then before tax cash flow is on this line. I built this model before doing the video uh, just so I had a guide uh, so I could move through it fairly quickly. And I'd forgotten how I'd done this. So, and then I have a sale. And again, the sale is equal to uh, that. The loan payoff is equal to the loan balance. The selling costs, again, are equal to that selling cost. And then our total levered cash flow, again, is the sum of all of these items right here. Bold that, copy this over. And this is our levered cash flow, cash flow after uh, debt service. And our cash on cash return, again, is our before tax cash flow divided by whatever equity, which in this case, our equity is, this number, I'm going to use an F4 to lock that in, 
make it positive. And it makes sense that our cash on cash return is lower. Copy this over. Our cash on cash return, bold that, and then I'm going to find the average over the hold, which is 8.2%. Levered IRR, the IRR of that, that's 16.17. And then the levered equity multiple is the same formula as we used here. Uh, unfortunately, I had made some of these absolutes so much. Uh, I'm just going to copy this formula down, save us a little bit of time. Hit F2 so I make sure. Yep. And it's again the same formula where it's 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 the sum of all positive values divided by the sum of all negative values. Uh, but making turning those negative values positive, really, it's the it's the sum of all uh, inflows divided by the sum of all outflows that gives us our uh, equity mul our levered equity multiple in this case. And uh, finally, let's just complete our summary box. Now, I may have made an error uh, somewhere in this, uh, so let me know if you if if you find it. Um, but uh, I think this gives you a pretty good idea for how I just think about on just a more most basic level. Um, the uh, how I think about on just the most basic level a, a real estate model like this and hopefully you got some ideas for uh, you know, how I use the keyboard how I use keyboard uh, shortcuts and so forth I'm just copying these over and then talking as I go which is not an easy process So I have my levered equity multiple. I have my average cash on cash, which is actually average free and clear first. Average cash on cash. In this case, it makes it's just faster to use the mouse. Okay, and then I have a minimum debt coverage, which is I'm just going to do a min of all of those, and then I have a minimum debt yield, and that's just the minimum of all, all of these. And there we go. Now to finish. It's just formatting. So there's some formats that I don't really like. So what I want to do is I want to turn this into a box. Make this a box. Uh, I'm going to bold this. I'm going to underline all of my assumptions. I'm going to underline actually to here. Let's see. Let's underline returns to there as well. And then I'm going to bold those. Same for the risk. Underline and bold. And uh, finally, I'm just going to go to view, take off the grid lines, and then I'm going to take this very first column. I'm going to shrink it down. And there we go. I'm just a basic multifamily model. Uh, I was doing a save. Uh, just a basic multifamily model. Uh, it if I was doing this uh, without talking through it, it would maybe take me 20 minutes to build this out. Um, and so if you're doing a, a technical interview, if, if you're just practicing, if, or if you have a property and you really want to understand the returns and you don't have a model built for it, um, you practice this, you can get real good at it, 15, 20 minutes, and, and you can have uh, a value pretty quick. So uh, please feel free to reach out if you have questions, uh, and thanks for your time.